City News International, weeknights at 6.30 and 11.30. This is City TV, everywhere. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your city. I'm Paul Menier. Tonight, whipping your kids into shape. We're going to tell you about a new program to encourage fitness. Plus, behind the scenes with a monster truck driver. What it's like to have a career that involves crushing cars. And what's eating Theo tonight? An encore presentation of his education in the exotic world of coffee. But first up, a shortage of volunteers in Edmonton could take its toll. After 20 years of raising money for the poor, a group called Sharing and Responsibility might have to stop packing its food baskets for good. Marina Michaelides has the story tonight. <laughs> People power, clubbing together to sell food baskets for the homeless. Every third Saturday of the month, we have teams of volunteers here. And Francis, who's here this morning and has been every Saturday for the last 20 years, is the dreamer behind this whole project. I feel sorry when I see people suffering. Here, what we try to do is to is, is to uh, align uh, the needy into um, a direction where they can afford a, a normal way of life, at least exceeding uh, the two basic needs, uh, food and housing. Francis and 200 volunteers collectively bulk buy food and use the savings to pay poor people's rents. We take $3 off of the $25 basket towards the housing needs. Our board chose to fundraise uh, for housing needs for PAFE, which is the Prostitution and Awareness in Action uh, group. We uh, donated $500 a month for the part of their organization that deals with providing housing for girls. I know some girls uh, were able to use it for a down payment on an apartment. The baskets help volunteers too. Discounts from buying in bulk means produce worth $40 only costs 25 It's a kind of value-added program because it also helps people to stretch their budget um, and it helps people to, uh, to come together in a, in a sense of community. Anyone can join as long as they give something back. Participants simply have to come. Um, give us two hours of volunteer time th throughout the month. We have volunteers doing all kinds of things, so they, they, we accumulate their volunteer hours um, to show that it is sharing and responsibility, meaning we're all in this together. Everybody has something to give to somebody else. It's a fun thing to do. You get to go around and uh, help people out. We all work out of our heart here, and uh, because we believe that we have to help uh, the, you know, the, the people that are in need. But sharing and responsibility has run out of volunteers to administer the organization. Next month might be their last. It takes people, it takes time. You have to have people with free time to do a lot of this, and I guess we're just finding it difficult to get these people. It's basically a crisis of volunteers uh, who are willing to commit uh, to, uh, to governing and to help us with our board. We need four executive positions, president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. Unless volunteers come forward before the group's May 12th board meeting, the only basket packing they'll be doing in future is packing up. If you'd like to volunteer, just go to our website. That's citytv.com. Go to the Your City icon, and we've got a link to their website. How do you get your child to choose fruit over candy, soccer over PlayStation? Well, studies show our kids are eating more and moving less. In fact, 9 out of 10 Alberta school children are failing Health Canada's physical activity guidelines. City TV Suda Krishna now on how some schools are taking action. Three, two, one, beautiful. Get ready for chair aerobics at Blessed Kateri School. For 10 minutes, these grade 5 students are jumping, moving, and sweating. We're trying to get their, bra their brains full of blood and get the blood moving through their bodies so they don't feel so sluggish and lethargic. Um, very tired, active, um, fit warm. I'm feeling pretty tired and pumped up. Ryan Dishnowski is also pretty honest about the three hours a night he's on the couch. I have a PS3 and I spend most of my time on it, but if I have the chance, I do try and go get active playing basketball. Like we're using some cucumbers and we're using some raisins and all kinds of stuff. 
stuff? At Holy Cross School, little Alice and Bartha is making a fun and healthy snack. For Nutrition Month, we made March uh, kebabs, so it had all green things, so like honeydew, broccoli, spinach, and it really exposes to students who haven't tried those types of vegetables or don't know that they might like them, and then they can go home and ask their parents maybe to go buy them. Some of the fun ways health facilitators are helping kids. Ten schools are part of the Alberta Project promoting active living and healthy eating, or APPLE. For three years, health facilitators will not only inspire the children, but parents and staff as well. Tina is someone who always gets us active no matter what time of day so I have a pair of runners under my desk because she might say let's do chair aerobics during our staff meeting. In fact community involvement is key especially for pediatricians helping kids and teenagers at this clinic the Stollery Children's Hospital. The assumption is that mums and dads should be able to do it all or could be able to do it all at home, but the school plays a really important role as well to introduce boys and girls to those kinds of opportunities. Dr. Jeff Bell says the Pediatric Weight Loss Clinic sees about 150 children a year, many already showing risks of chronic illnesses. We see boys and girls uh, at eight years of age and up, and the risk factors for type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease start that early. I think that's my biggest challenge is trying to, to show parents, the people who buy their children food um, that you can have a healthy meal without it costing a lot of money and it can be convenient it just is going to take a bit more prep time health facilitators say the adults need more help to switch habits but the schools are happy the kids are open to change that's because they're honest and maybe kids like Ryan will bring his new lessons to his couch yeah I shoot some chair aerobics while I'm waiting for the game to start and exercise when I have the chance. The U of A School of Public Health is behind this program with the help of a $5 million contribution by an anonymous donor. Well, lots more to come on our show, including what's eating Theo and next. A new partnership means more affordable housing for your city. Your city weather brought to you by Edmonton Public Schools. Bright futures begin here. The city and province have joined forces to put a dent in the affordable housing problem. Today, it was announced 12 projects have received funding. Stacy Brossel has more. Herman Jab says he lives the life of Riley. A pilsner in his hand, a beautiful view, his wife of 51 years at his side at a home they've rented for four decades. But try mowing this lawn and climbing these stairs. A recent heart attack, not to mention a six-decade-long smoking habit, is slowing this 75-year-old down. In the winter time, I don't use stairs. I sit on my hind and slide down, and I'm at the car. The Jabs are third on a waiting list for the new Sundance Co-op Seniors Home in Riverdale. It's expected construction will start on the nine-unit complex this summer. Very, very long overdue. So it's all coming together. It's taking time, but it's getting there. I'm pleased to recognize and thank the following participants. Funding for it was announced by the city and the province. It's called the Cornerstone Plan. $34 million for 379 affordable housing units this year, with promises of more to come. This is 2,500 units that are, are going to come, you know, uh, onto the market here by 2010. And that, over a five-year period, is outstanding. $410,000 will go to the seniors' housing. The head of the co-op says this money will make this project possible. They already owned the land. They just needed a lot of help with the capital costs, which totaled around $2.2 million. The uh, amount of funding that we've received from Cornerstones here is really making up for the high cost of land. Uh, for an organization like Habitat to purchase land in the city of Edmonton um, has almost been impossible. More than a million will go to this Habitat for Humanity project in northeast Edmonton. It will supply 18 families with homes. 42 units will be built on this land in Baturn. The project has been on the books for years. Cash from Cornerstone is getting it off the ground. The situation is very desperate. We hold information sessions every month for people interested in cooperative housing, and we've seen the numbers triple at those meetings. It's incredible. Capital Region Housing Corporation has 3,000 families on a waiting list. And even with the financial barrier taken care of, there's the availability of materials and workers. While we're not um, progressing as fast as we would like to, 
Uh, there's limits as to what's humanly possible to do here, and I think most organizations are going as fast as they can. Not fast enough for the jabs. They can't wait to move in into a ground floor unit. None. I can hardly wait. I'm so sick of stairs. <laughs> An announcement on opening up the market to secondary rental suites is expected in the next few months. Well, our Carla Turner in St. Albert tonight at the Marie Poberon School where kids are getting in touch with their artistic side. That's right, Paul. Nearly the entire school has been transformed into an art gallery for the second annual art fair. Now, each student has at least two pieces of artwork on display. Plus, there's professional artists on hand to show off their work and give the kids a chance to uh, try their hand at the art forms as well. But we'll get to that in just a minute. First, let's take a look at what we're going to wake up to. Plus six, first thing, an increasing cloudiness throughout the morning. And as the day progresses, we'll see a 60% chance of rain, high of 13. But hey, at least we're in the double digits. I'm here with Jacqueline Darger boucher the teacher here at the school. Now you guys have spent a lot of hours turning this into what looks like a real live art gallery. Absolutely and I have to say I mean our part as teachers is the really easy part. I have um, the parents, the volunteers that put together and made it so professional. They're the ones who really need to be applauded for today and of course the students their talents are something to celebrate. When you spent a lot of hours, um, the kids spent a lot of hours with you creating masterpieces. And that's just the thing. I think um, with children, all you have to do is give them that opportunity. And then, wow, they, they fly with it. And if you walk the hallways and you look at the displays, you can't help but feel like what a powerful expression that they have done here this evening. And beyond uh, the kids' awesome artwork, you've also got some professional painters, sculptors, all kinds of people on hand to uh, show the kids the work. And how exciting for them to have that opportunity to see that um, their work, Work, their art is so very valuable and then look at these adults these adults they do this as they're living and um, you know who knows the possibilities for these kids I'm looking forward to taking a look around and coming up in the next segment we'll meet a professional painter plus some pint-sized artists back to you Paul all right thank you Carl coming up Canadians love their coffee how do you brew the perfect cup of Joe what's eating Theo is next Theo is away this week, so here's a repeat presentation all about the most popular drink in Canada. Edmonton's connoisseurs of coffee steam us up an excellent brew. You know what's eating me? I'm not even awake yet, and I'm looking for the perfect cup of coffee. To have a perfect cup of coffee, you need to start with some great green. This is green green coffee from Panama, actually. This coffee cost me $28 a pound. Let's, let's make up a pot. Coffee starts off in a cherry on a coffee tree, and they put the cherry, in this case, in water, let it ferment in a water bath, then they strip that pulp away, and we end up with the green coffee. Coffee is much like wine, in that there's a ter there is terroir. Ter terroir characteristic to coffee. Sure. Brazilians tend to be nutty. A little bit chocolatey flavors, vanilla. Harars or Ethiopian coffees, uh, blueberry, citrus, spice notes, some oh, jasmine. Uh, Sumatra is uh, earthy, whiny, some dark fruits in it. And then the good, the year matters too, right? For the Ethiopian Harar, we roast that quite light because we want to accentuate the blueberry notes. Whereas with the Sumatra, we roast that darker because we want to get some more of the chocolatey notes out of sort of that more full body flavor. We're roasting the coffee for about 15 to 16 minutes. You've got to cool coffee down fast or it just bakes in its own juices. Just like wine, coffee has a flavor wheel. Some of the basic characteristics of coffee, some vocabulary, just like wine. So you're going to get some whiny, soury flavors in some, some sweet, mellow. Nippy. Nippy. Acid's good. Acid in coffee is important. If you don't have acid, you have bad coffee. At a light roast, acid's up here. As you roast, darker and darker and darker, acidity falls away, bitterness goes way up. That's why some coffee roasters that we're familiar with, they roast coffee really darkly, and that's why you get bitterness in the coffee. One of the best ways to make coffee, period, is the clover. The clover is uh, this fancy machine here. There's about 20 of them in all of Canada. This is the only one in Edmonton. It's about an $11,000, one cup at a time machine. It's sort of a cross between a French press and an espresso machine. Look at this. So up, yeah, so it's like a little now, coffee it's, now it's extracting, pouring it, pulling it down here. Smell the aromas, and then, uh... Mm. 
Oh, it's just, it's sweet and mm. subtle and delicious. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, eh? That is beautiful. What has more caffeine, light roast or dark roast? You know what, the reality is dark roasts have a little bit more caffeine, but it's so, it's so negligible. It's not the roasting of the beans that matters, it's, it's the brewing, me brewing method that it determines how much caffeine ends up in the coffee. You want coffee fresh within five to six days of it being roasted, so when, and that's what we try to do here at Transcend, put it in an airtight container, and fridges are terrible, so yeah. I think that's really important information for everybody. Grinding fresh is really important because when the, the, you're in grinding right before you brew, all those aromatics that you want to experience in the coffee are still present. For amazing espresso, the machine matters. This is the this is the Lamborghini of espresso machines. One of the most important things about espresso is proper brewing temperature, and we control the temperature of the water on this machine. It's actually set to 203.5 degrees. So even when making a latte, you want to make it's still important to have a perfect shot of espresso, right? That's the foundation. So you're going to do some razzle dazzle as well. Gonna do a little bit of latte art here. Swirling. Fantastic. Creamy, rich, smooth. Paul, thank you so much for having me. It's been a the, pleasure. The best coffee I've ever had in my whole life. Cheers. Anytime. I'm flying out of here today. <laughs> Theo's next adventure, next week, divine wine tasting. Pairing up some of the best wines in the city with snacks from their country of origin. Still ahead in your city, it's an adrenaline rush. What's it like behind the wheel of a mechanical monster? We're going to take you for a ride right after the break. Plus... Help and healing through music, the extraordinary voices of a children's choir from Africa. When you work with a realtor to sell your home, you gain access to a whole team of experts working to get you the best return. People like Carrie Polzer, who works for Wendy Interiors, a home staging company. It's our job to ensure that your home is presented in its most attractive light. For example... Well, an empty room lacks warmth, so by adding furniture, lighting, and accessories, we're able to make it feel more like a home. So by giving it a homey feeling, it encourages buyers? Absolutely. Buyers are more likely to fall in love with a home that's been staged, giving you an opportunity for a quicker sale. And your investment of even a couple of hundred dollars can add thousands to your offers. We've made it easier for the buyer to picture themselves living in the house. Which makes it easier for you to sell. Home staging, another way your realtor helps you get the most value when you sell your home. To find out more, go to howrealtorshelp.ca today. For the best way to start your day, wake up with us, the Breakfast Television Team. Weekday mornings, 6 to 10 on City TV. Alberta's Best is hiring. The most effective way to jumpstart your career. Sundays at 1.30. I've been doing it since I've been uh, 19 years old, 43 now. So uh, I've been at it quite a while, 20-some years. And, uh, you know, you get up in the morning, You don't, sometimes you don't know if you're going to go to bed that night because if you go out and, you know, you do crash a truck or break something, break a transmission, you know, you're up, you know, most of the night fixing the truck and then you get ready to do it all over again. And you're tired and sometimes you just like, just like any work, you know, job or whatever, what, you know, what am I doing? But there's always something that keeps the drive going and it's, it's actually the fans. You get jacked up, I mean, your, your, your adrenaline's gone. I can't count how many times I've crashed, but uh, really had no serious, serious where I've gotten injured. But we've had some pretty good ones where we tore the truck up pretty good. That's how it's done. <laughs> uh -huh. Black Stallion is a uh, 2007 Ford F-150. It's all custom built. It's got a custom chassis, uh, custom shocks. And it weighs 10,000 pounds. It's got 1,500 horsepower. What kind of mileage does this baby get? Well, actually, outside, um, you run it wide open, 300 feet, you'll use five gallons of fuel. <laughs> so it's a matter of feet per gallon. I've thought about doing other stuff, but this is what I know, this is what I do, and uh, it, it would take many years to do an another occupation and as well as I do this one, so I pretty well just stick with this one. Your city's Carla Turner back at an event inspiring kids with the work of local professional artists. 
That's right, Paul. We're celebrating art at the second annual art fair. And in just a minute, we'll meet one of the professional painters here helping inspire the kids. But first, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast. A sun shining day today, but we won't be seeing much of it over the next couple of days. Tuesday, Wednesday, rain. Chance of snow on Thursday in the clear Friday. And then as you can see, Saturday and Monday, there is a chance of rain once again. I'm here with Monk, a professional painter. What do you have on display for the kids today? Well, it's not just display. They're actually going to get involved and going to be totally and completely active in this beautiful painting of Cathedral Grove. It's one of the trees in Cathedral Grove on the island. And they're actually going to be painting right on that masterpiece, which is going to sell for $3,000. They're going to put their names on the back. And they're going to learn that they, in fact, can pick up a paintbrush. There's no mystery to it. Just pick it up and you too can paint. And this goes for all the adults out there that wish they had painted at some particular time. Just pick up a paintbrush. You'll enjoy it tremendously. And you're a busy woman. You have shows across the country. Why is it important for you to volunteer your time for these kids? You know, it's unfortunate that schools like this do not have an art teacher. And I would love to see in Canada, all across Canada, that there would be art teachers in every single a school. That would be absolutely fantastic. Well, definitely a great way to give back. And the stars of the night, I am here with Lauren, Taylor, Julia, and Abby. You guys have been working hard over the last couple months. What kind of uh, projects have you been up to? Um, we've done masks and uh, we've had clay paintings and other paintings and we have all kinds of great stuff, hey? I'm looking forward to checking it out. Definitely an invaluable experience for these kids, and who knows, maybe their work will show up in the uh, Art Gallery of Alberta. And back to you, Paul. All right, thank you, Carla. It's a critically acclaimed performance that's burning up the stage. Fire is back in Edmonton, and the production is ready to heat things up. I don't think you'll see a more entertaining show this year. The story inspired by the lives of real-life cousins, rocker Jerry Lee Lewis and TV evangelist Jimmy Swaggart. Fire tells the tale of two brothers. Cale is set on being a musician. Herschel becomes a preacher like their father. Actor Ted Dykstra plays Cale, a role he starred in at the Citadel more than 20 years ago. You're asking me to break the law. The age of consent in this I think the biggest difference is that when I was 27, I had to imagine what it's like to be 47. And so uh, I don't have to do that anymore. So in, in Act 2, I don't really have to act. I can just be the old guy that I am. And in Act 1, I can still remember what it's like to be 19. So um, I think I'm a better actor this time around. Fire runs until May 18th at the Citadel Theatre. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight, everybody. Going to leave you with uh, this African Children's Choir that was on breakfast television this morning. We'll have a story on them later in the week here in your city. Good night. Masia, Tokyo, Tikinga, Nako, Kwea, Sima.